Today, at the risk of sounding like a big fat fanboy, and, and I know you're gonna call me a shill in the comment section no matter who I'm promoting, but I wanna talk about why you may wanna consider AMD over Nvidia for your next GPU. Now look, the key word here is may. M-A-Y, you may wanna consider. I'm not saying you definitely should buy an AMD card. I'm not saying Nvidia is bad. I'm not saying AMD is objectively better because that's like impossible to quantify anyway. So with all of that being said, I'm just saying you may wanna consider AMD and here's why. Now, the reason why I'm even making this video is because I'm a big believer in giving credit where credit is due and AMD has come a long way. Now, trust me, I'm no stranger to AMD driver issues. I've had my fair share with this guy right here. I I've definitely have had my experiences with, with some bad drivers, okay? I get it. It seems like AMD has recently really ironed out a lot of their software related issues. But even outside the software, I think there's many reasons why you may wanna consider an AMD graphics card over Nvidia for your next GPU purchase. Now let's go ahead and start off with the first benefit of AMD over Nvidia, and that is the obvious one. They're cheaper, right? AMD is always known to be the value-based option. And this has been true against Intel and it has been true against Nvidia for quite some time now. And they're not letting their foot off the gas now with their new upcoming GPUs, the 7900 XT and 7900 XTX. Essentially, this is what you're looking at. If you look at the launch of the RTX 3080, it had a really good price of $699 or $700. But AMD was coming in with its competitor, the 6800 XT, for $50 less, $649.99. That's not a lot cheaper, but it is cheaper. Now, nothing should be going for those prices anymore. I mean, after all, these cards are all two years old at this point, and new cards are on the horizon. And so if you get on Newegg or something like that, you can see that AMD cards are hundreds of dollars below MSRP. And while this is also true for some Nvidia cards, AMD is still even cheaper in the discounted phase for graphics cards when compared to Nvidia. And if we look at the upcoming GPUs, we can see the AMD 7900 XT is going to be $900 and the XTX will be $999 or $1,000. And if you look at the direct competitor, according to AMD, which is the NVIDIA RTX 4080, that is already launching at $1,200. And that's for a founder's edition. It goes up several hundred dollars if you get a higher end AIB card. Honestly, it's so high at that point, you might as well just go ahead and buy a 4090 for $1,600. Now, the 7900 XTX is not meant to go head to head with the 4090. We all know that, fine. But for $1,000, it's coming in $200 cheaper than the competition, which is the 4080 at $1,200. And while we do still need to wait for the official benchmarks, it is looking like the 7900 XTX will outperform the 4080. That remains to be seen, but it, it is kind of looking that way. So all in all, you can go with AMD if you're on a budget, you can go with AMD even if you're not on a budget, but you just like saving money. And so you may say, well, they gotta be cheaper for a reason, right? Obviously they can't compete, they can't perform as well as Nvidia, so clearly they're cheaper for that reason. Now, if you actually take the time to look at benchmarks, you may be surprised. Even though AMD is cheaper, they can still put up a fight against Nvidia. In fact, AMD cards often beat Nvidia at lower resolutions like 1080p and 1440p. While at 4K, Nvidia does seem to be a very clear winner, but I'm excited to see if that changes with the upcoming cards, the 7900 XT and 7900 XTX. But all in all, even though AMD is cheaper, it's not like the gaming performance is bad. It's actually really good. When I say AMD can outperform Nvidia at the lower resolutions, that is native rendering, just pure rasterization that does not include ray tracing. So if you need ray tracing, Nvidia is the way to go, but if you're okay with having less ray tracing performance or not using it at all, and you just want native rendering, then yeah, I mean, from a performance perspective, AMD trades blows with Nvidia. The, the only place they really fall behind is at 4K. Okay, so what else does AMD have to offer? Well, AMD is also more power efficient in most cases. Now, I'm not gonna bore you going through a whole bunch of different wattage requirements for various GPUs. You can look up two different models for yourself of whatever you're looking to buy, and you can see that in most cases, if not all, AMD actually has 
lower power requirements, wattage requirements, however you want to phrase it, when compared to NVIDIA. And if you go back and look at the most recent keynote, Dr. Lisa Su kept talking about performance per watt. AMD was really focused on efficiency. And a lot of my viewers are in Europe. Thank you, by the way. I love having you guys in the Discord. It's great talking to you about, about the other countries and stuff like that. But with all of that being said, I know you're going through a power crisis right now. You don't necessarily need the heaviest hitting GPU on the planet. You need more performance per watt. You need more efficiency. And based off my comments on previous videos and the people in my Discord, I know a lot of you are going to appreciate that. One benefit you're gonna get with AMD, no matter what card you buy, is FSR. AMD did recently confirm they are working on FSR 3. It's supposed to be a competitor to NVIDIA's DLSS 3, and it will also have similar frame generation technology. And AMD also made sure they made it perfectly clear that unlike NVIDIA, they're not gonna lock it down to just only the new cards where you have to go buy a brand new card if you want this technology. They're actually working on making this technology available for previous generation GPUs. So that means you can go buy a 6800 XT, a 6750 XT, whatever you want today, and still have access to the upcoming features and technologies. Now, there is a little bit of a drawback with this because AMD is so friendly with this technology that they even allow their competitor NVIDIA to utilize the technology as well. So technically speaking, you wouldn't really want to buy an AMD GPU just to have FSR because technically you can buy an NVIDIA GPU and have access to both FSR and DLSS. But the reason why I bring it up is because if you go with AMD, you won't have to worry about completely missing out on upscaling technologies. I know that's the way the, the world is working right now. Everyone is really racing to have the latest and greatest upscaling technologies. And so I don't want you to feel like you're gonna completely miss out if you go with AMD. AMD does have their own version. You still have access to it if you go to Nvidia. So just, just keep that in mind. But if you're leaning toward AMD, but you're worried about not having access to any kind of upscaling technology, you don't have to worry. FSR will be available for you. Now, if you're looking to buy a new AMD GPU, like the 7900 XT or the 7900 XTX, you will have a couple of other benefits in your favor, because assuming you're looking to buy next generation stuff, if you didn't buy AMD, you would go with Nvidia. And right now, Nvidia has a massive problem with a little something called the 12 pin connector. You might've heard about this. Right now, there are a lot of people who are having issues with this connector. It is melting, it is causing damage, and even if their graphics cards are totally fine, they're not usable once the connector itself melts. And so now they have to go buy a new connector and, and figure out what went wrong so it doesn't happen again. And, and for me, I would personally be worried about it being a fire hazard, but that that's just me. And no matter how you wanna slice it, it doesn't look good when someone says, hey, I just dropped 16, 17, $1,800 on a graphics card, and a week later, my connectors are completely melting and they don't have an official root cause at this time. And that's why it's it's even more scary. And so if you decide to go with AMD for the next generation of GPUs, you won't have to worry about using a special connector of any kind. They will continue to use the traditional eight pin connectors. And so that means your existing power supply will already work. And also these cards are smaller and AMD made a big deal about it being an easy upgrade. So you won't have to worry about a new power supply, a new cable, a new case or anything like that. It's plug and play as, as they like to say. But the fact remains, that's not a problem you'll have with AMD. And even though it sounds like I'm really promoting them, I'm just listing out the facts that that's all. Now, another benefit of going with AMD for the upcoming GPU generation is DisplayPort 2.1. You'll have DisplayPort 2.1. And a lot of people don't really care about that and many other people do care about that. And so you'll have to decide if that matters to you or not. But essentially what this means is that you'll have access to the option of running games at higher frame rates than ever before at certain resolutions. An example is at 1440p, you'll be able to play games up to 900 FPS. Now, this is all theoretical, of course, because after all, 
Currently, at the time of filming, there are no displays that can take advantage of DisplayPort 2.1. AMD did confirm that those displays are coming and they are in partnership with companies to make that happen, but currently they're not available. And then whenever they are available, you'll have to go buy one of those. And then you'll also need a DisplayPort 2.1 cable in order to even be able to make this reality happen. And then on top of that, you'll need a game that can go up to 900 FPS at 1440p. Various games have certain frame rate limits built into their engines. And once you hit that, you can't go past it. I think Apex Legends has 300 FPS and Overwatch has 600. These numbers are kind of theoretical. And so you'll have to make that decision for yourself if DisplayPort 2.1 matters to you. But if it does, AMD is the way you wanna go. Now, it is worth noting that previously with AMD cards, if you're a content creator like me, AMD is really not where you wanna go. You typically wanna be on the Nvidia side of things. However, with their upcoming GPUs, that does seem to be changing. AMD confirmed a new partnership with OBS and AMD is bringing a brand new AV1 encoder. And so this should help out streamers if you're streaming to Twitch or YouTube or even other content creators if you're editing in different pieces of software like DaVinci Resolve, for example. So with all of that being said, that is another benefit if you're a content creator. Oh, and another really good benefit about AMD is that if you get an AMD CPU from the 3000 series and up and an AMD GPU, I think from the 6000 series and up, you can take advantage of something called SAM or smart access memory. The NVIDIA users will know this is resizable bar and, and it's all the same thing. And, and technically it, it kind of is, but there is one massive advantage for AMD. And that is at the time of filming, there seems to be more games supported with SAM as opposed to normal resizable bar on NVIDIA. For whatever reason, NVIDIA seems to not really update this support that often, so I'm not really sure how that works. So if you're already using an AMD CPU from the 3000 series and up, and you're currently using an NVIDIA GPU, but you're looking to upgrade, that is a really good benefit of going with AMD. It's kind of like getting a, a special field bonus or something like that for putting two different matching pairs together. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting a little bit too nerdy, I guess. But yeah, you, you get what I'm saying. It's free performance, so why not? Another big benefit of going with AMD is their adrenaline software. Now look, I understand AMD has had their software issues and driver issues and things of that nature, but the good thing about software is that it can be patched and therefore it can be better and that's great. And I love what they're trying to do here. It is one piece of software to control both your CPU and your GPU. And they don't even require you to make an account to log in. There's no passwords or anything like that. You download the software, open it, and boom, it just works. And I really appreciate that because that's basically unheard of in 2022. And that's another reason why I'm making the video. I'm just trying to help people understand AMD is a viable option and here are the benefits of going with AMD. I'm not saying AMD is better than Nvidia. Nvidia is more popular for a reason, but because of that, they're also more expensive. So it really just comes down to what's your budget and what do you need out of a graphics card? But that's all I got. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, hit the like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed for more content. I definitely plan on buying the 7900 XTX and I will make a lot of content around that. Check this video out over here where I compare the RTX 4080 to the 7900 XTX. It's all based on leaked numbers and stuff like that, but it's a pretty fun video, so check it out. But that's all I got and until next time, E-Rock out.